and welcome to worship. I'm so glad to see all of you this morning on this beautiful morning. It feels a little like spring this weekend, so um, I'm feeling like there's a little spring in my step with this uh, beautiful weather that we've had. If you are joining us online, uh, welcome to you. And there is a pinned comment, and it has two links in it. One is our Get Connected card. We would love to connect with you um, and know that you're visiting with us. And second is um, our giving link. So um, those are provided in the pinned comment. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. So it is Super Bowl Sunday. I do confess that I did not until maybe 30 minutes ago, an hour ago, know who was playing in the Super Bowl. Um, so it's not really high on my list. And um, I was talking to Neil and I said, are, we gonna, are you going to have the game on tonight? And he said, maybe, I don't really care about it. And I said, well, I don't actually know who's playing. And he said, well, you win. <laughs> And um, then he told me, and I've already forgotten. Um, so anyway, it is Super Bowl Sunday, but it is also Sunday, and we have lots of things happening here today. Uh, we are doing confirmation at 4 o'clock, and we are doing youth from 5 to 6. So um, we will get everybody at home in time for kickoff, but we will have our normal Sunday um, afternoon kinds of things happening here. And we hope that um, you will enjoy your Sunday afternoon, and we're glad that you are in worship with us. At the back, we have an opportunity for you to be connected in our church family. There are some um, cards that you can sign, and they are going to go to our shut-ins. And then we have bags, and we are asking if you would just pick up a bag and take it and deliver it to um, one of our shut-ins. It has the address on it. And we're not asking that you do a long visit or anything like that. In fact, if you could just drop it, knock on the door, and say, Forest Hill loves you, and here's a little midwinter cheer. Um, and leave it. That would be wonderful. You can take more than one bag. Um, we just want to make sure that they get delivered and we get, get delivered with a smile on our face. Um, maybe even with just our eyes since we might be behind a mask. Um, but we do uh, hope that you will help us in that way and spread some um, midwinter, isn't that a nice word, midwinter cheer um, on this uh, week when we are celebrating, when the world is celebrating love, we are celebrating that we have love every day and plenty of love to share in our world. So please do take those on your way out. Um, if you need more, if we run out in this service, we have some in the other service and we'll be happy to grab a few more bags. So, um, a wonderful opportunity. So, with all of those announcements, I invite you to stand as we prepare our hearts in prayer. Holy Lord, we give you thanks for you do love us fully and completely. You put passion and love in our hearts that comes out in our lives. And Lord, in these moments, we have stopped our life to come before you in worship, to be knit together in the family of believers, to raise our voices with praise, to lift our hearts with thanksgiving, and to sit in this space to give you our attention so that all the things that we do in these moments may bring you honor and glory. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us, and that in all these things you may be glorified. This we ask and pray in your holy name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire awakens.
Lord, we lift up our prayers and thanksgiving to you, our King. We praise you for your wondrous works. We give thanks for the many blessings you bestow on us, your children. In gratitude and humbleness of heart, we come before you today to worship, praise, and honor you. Amen.
be seated. As we come to prayer this morning, we come remembering these folks, uh, Barbara Horgan, who had surgery again on Friday and did well in his home, uh, Wally Boswell, who's waiting on a sitting up MRI, which will happen next Sunday morning, but is still dealing with a great deal of pain, Jewel Alexander, who's waiting on a test to be approved so she can take it, and Evelyn Potter, who is slowly making her way through all the craziness of uh, what she's been going through with the cancer, and it's just a long, drawn-out process. We're remembering Laura Howie, who is uh, recovering from COVID, and Melissa Chiotto, who had surgery last week on her knee and it came home and is doing well. We're remembering Don Rogers, who tested positive again he, when he was retested for COVID, but he's doing well, uh, feeling good, but he's still watching himself. And we remember the Butts family, LaDonna's mother, uh, Bonnie Fletcher died a couple weeks ago. That funeral is this Thursday in uh, Tennessee. And we remember them as they travel there and back and as they remember her, her mama and her grandmother. And then we celebrate with Co Cooper Jordan who was accepted at Wake Forest, and, which is where he wanted to go. So that's a great moment and we celebrate that. With all those things in mind, we come to pray this morning. Uh, one of the, ways of praying is you, you can pray the Psalms in your life. You just read the Psalm and, and another, another way is you read the Psalm and as you come certain places you stop and pause and think about it. It's the same way you can pray the Lord's Prayer. You do a, a petition and then you pray on, take a detour and then come back and work your way through it. So today we're going to work together on, on the Psalm. Uh, so let us bow our heads in prayer. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. O oh God, we open our hearts to your presence and love. We come to confess complain, commiserate that life has been changed by the coronavirus. What was normal has morphed into an extended time of uncertainty. Our lives have been thrown off kilter. Our lives have been, dis been disconnected. And that is true in church. The attendance is down. Sorrow fills us. We look and miss people who are not here or who have moved or who left in search for something else. And we try to find reasons for the difference. It's like grasping at straws. Often everyone has a different answer for why we think things are so different. It is confusing. So we are filled with sadness. We often feel abandoned. We find hope is being squeezed out of us. We wonder what is happening. Fear begins to gnaw at us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Like the Hebrew children returning from exile, there is work to be done. So we pause to listen, to be attentive, to see signs of the Spirit at work in our midst. We continue to gather for worship to rejoice in God's goodness, to praise the creator of the universe, to give thanks for the gift of life. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, 
shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. So we share our hearts. Help us to share in the joy of renewal, whatever that looks like. Help us to find joy and laughter spilling out of us. Help us to be eager to participate in great things you are doing. Accept our sorrow and heartaches, but help us to see there is joy to come. We want to be your church. We want to see your Holy Spirit at work in our lives and in our ministry. Let your power fill us so we can be faithful people, so we can be a source of healing and new life in this community. Hear our prayer for a world in turmoil. We pray for the people of the Ukraine facing massive armed forces on their border facing confusion and fear, worried about violence and death. We pray for the leaders of our world, of Ukraine and Russia, but of all the nations who have a stake in what may happen. May they be guided by your spirit find a way of peace, to find a way of hope, and to avoid violence and death. We pray for the people of North Korea struggling through a hard winter, living in a tough, tough regime. But we pray that you would be with your church there with people who want to reach out and help them. We pray that you will be with their leaders and help them to see beyond fear and power. Oh God, hear our prayer for people struggling with life and death. Be with Barbara as she recovers. Be with Wally as he waits and ease his pain. Bless Diane as she takes care of him. Be with Joel and Evelyn and Lauren. Thank you that Melissa is doing well. Watch over Don. Surround the Butts family with your strong arms of comfort and love. Let them have a safe trip this week. We thank you that Cooper got an acceptance at Wake Forest and that that brings joy to his heart. Oh God, we are bold to pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory scripture this morning, it comes from Proverbs 11, verse 25. Generous persons will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Okay, at a very basic level, what do you need to make a sandwich? Bread and something in the middle, right? Peanut butter, jelly, pimento cheese, ham, turkey, something in the middle. So I got up on Friday morning and I needed to pack my lunch. And I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking about the center of my sandwich, right? Because that's where I start, because that's the important part. That's the flavorful part. So there's peanut butter and jelly, and there's some in a cheese, and there's like just thinking through all the options. And I'm like, well, while I'm deciding, I'll get out the bread, the second important part of this. 
And I went to reach for the bread and you know what's gonna happen, right? There's no bread in my house. So I'm a pretty creative girl. I'm like, let's reach for the crackers. Also, no crackers. So instead of packing a sandwich for my lunch on Friday, I had a pack of nabs. Do y'all know what nabs are? Yeah, they're not great. They're, they'll work in a pinch. They'll fill up your belly, but it's not that great. So I was thinking about, you know, like, oh, that's a bummer. Anyway, so I didn't have a great lunch on Friday. On Saturday, I was in this group text message. And the group text message was our centering prayer group. And um, we've been praying for Barbara, and we've been keeping updated on what's happening. And I began to see, like, this little trend unfolding. And Angie is like, I'm going to drop off some restorative pimento cheese. And Claire says, wait a minute, pimento cheese goes great with bread. And I'm like, they're going to make a sandwich. They're going to make that sandwich that I didn't have yesterday. And so they coordinate together, and Angie drops off fresh bread and homemade pimento cheese. And Barbara replies back, that was really good. It's really good. So these two people with these different gifts, ideas of what they can bring to the table brought this two things together and created a sandwich. The very thing that you know you have to have one for each other that I discovered more fully than normal the day before. And Barbara says, it's so good. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, y'all, this is a picture of the church. When we take the things that we have and we give it, we make something that's even better. You see, Angie had given me pimento cheese, and that was the pimento cheese I had in my refrigerator, but I couldn't partake in this on Friday because it would have been by the spoonful, and that's really weird. Because I didn't have the other piece of it, the thing that I needed. But Claire said, hey, I can do bread. And the result of that was a sandwich. And you think, Mandy, this isn't a big deal, it's just a sandwich. But when Barbara ate that sandwich on Saturday, it was love, it was grace, it was caring, it was an experience of the goodness of being a part of the body of Christ. In her moment when she needed love and care, she had someone deliver that in a very tangible form. The pimento cheese is great, but if you don't have the bread, that's not very helpful. And the bread is great, but it's always better with a little bit of spread. And that's what we do in this life together. When we are connected together, when we are giving our gifts, we are doing powerful and wonderful things. Even if they look so small, they become blessed and they become the goodness of God's grace in the world in tangible and important ways. When we give to God, we always give first and foremost to God's glory. But when we take the little piece that we have, when we look at our tithe and we write out that check, it doesn't look like that much, but we put it together and God does amazing things. God blesses our world. We move from being takers to being givers to being part of a life-giving place that loves the world. So our little things, like sandwiches, like our tithes, like our gifts, when we do that together, they become so much more. So may we give with grateful hearts. May we be people who are generous, who seek to find ways to love each other well, and who are connected to God's beautiful kingdom. Because in that, we will not only be generous, but our hearts will be refreshed. You please stand and join us in singing. Oh, how I long for heaven and a place called earth Where everyone's son and daughter will know their worth And all of the streets sound with thunderous joy. Oh, how I long for heaven in a place called earth. Oh, the wars we haven't won. Oh, the songs we've left and
chasing down these stolen years, reaching out for ends unseen on the borderlines, the borderlines. Oh, how I long for heaven in a place called earth, where everyone's
scripture this morning, it comes from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 20 and verse 27. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts, and all the parts are one, bo- are one in the body, even though there are many. We are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we are all given one spirit to drink. Certainly the body isn't but one part, but many. If the foot says, I am not part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not mean that they are part of the body. If the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not the eye, does that mean it is not part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, what would happen to the hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, what would happen to the sense of smell? But as it is, God has placed each one of the parts in the body just like he wanted. If all were one and the same part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts but one body. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this, your word. Lord, we pray that through your Holy Spirit, we will hear your message for us in these moments. Amen. So we're continuing our series on Connect, which is our word for 2022. And we hope over the next year that we will be challenged to connect deeper to God, to one another, to our community, and to our world. So last Sunday, Wes talked about how we are connected through love. That love is the glue that connects us together, that allows us a place to belong. And so today, I want us to think about what our responsibility is if we belong in the body of Christ. Belonging to the body of Christ should empower us to do work in the body and to live out our lives in a way that bring about the kingdom of God in this world. So there is this quote that I confess I heard from Spider-Man, and you can believe that it's either Spider-Man or there's this second idea that it's Voltaire. I don't know, one seems fancier than the other, but I'm just going to tell you I heard it from Spider-Man. With great privilege comes great responsibility. This scripture from 1 Corinthians is all about the body, that we are all parts in the body, and that is a great privilege to be part of the body. But with that privilege, we have responsibility. Imagine for just a moment that everybody that you are going to encounter in this day is exactly like you. That's both comforting and terrifying, right? You're never going to have to explain yourself. You're only going to choose, you get to choose from everywhere in the world that has everything that you like. Like, there are some perks to this. The flip side is, you have to live with yourself at every turn. That's terrifying. That would be so hard. Nobody would want that, right? Nobody, as much as we love ourselves, would want to only live with ourselves. We want variety. We want to be around people who are different. We want to be in a body that is well-rounded, because in and of ourselves, we're not all that well-rounded. In the same way, this body of Christ benefits so much when we are all different and contributing our gifts. Do you know what part you play in the body of Christ? It's really important. Knowing what your place is in the body. What is your place in this community of faith? How are you gift and graced? I love to ask this to people. How are you gift and graced? And people are like, what in the world are you talking about? Meaning, what are your gifts and your talents? How has God created you? in all of the goodness that you are, and given you gifts and graces to be a full part of the body that brings honor and glory to God. And I'll tell you what most people do is go, I don't don't have any gifts. Really? None. Really? None. You see, the world seems to teach us that this thing called humility means that we just shy away from claiming anything about who we are, how God has gifted and graced us. And that's actually not what humility means at all. In fact, to be humble is to recognize 
other people's gifts as well as your own. Not to think more highly of yourself, but that doesn't mean that you discount who you are, who God created you to be. So God created you with gifts and talents. Every person that hears my voice is created with beautiful gifts and talents. And what I really actually believe is that we are doing a disservice and a dishonor to God when we don't claim what our gifts are. Because when we do claim what our gifts are, we are saying, God who loves me, who created me, the creator of the world, the maker of all things, gave me something wonderful, and I am going to use it to do good in the world. And when you get to that place, when you're able to identify the things and the ways that God uniquely blesses you and gives you skills, then you are empowered to do good in the world. Knowing and claiming our gifts is truly important. It is the way in which we come to know the fullness of who we are. Each of us is given good gifts that edify the community of faith. That is scriptural. You may not know your gift. You may be wondering, what is this gift that I have? What am I good at? If you are sitting in that place, find somebody who knows you well, who you trust and can encourage you and say, hey, what do you think I'm good at? And you might be surprised at what they tell you. Or look at your life. What are you passionate about? What ways in which do you get energy? So our gifts give us energy. So you know there are tasks in the world, and some tasks, they give us energy, right? So even though you're doing it and you are giving energy out, you're getting it back. And there's some tasks that just wear us out. So you have to do both of those in life, right? But there are these places where you get passion. And when you're really attuned to those places that you get passion, you begin to realize that that is where you are gift and graced. And the more you can lean into that, the more you can do that, the more fun life is, the more energy you have, the more connected to other people you are, the more you are able to be part of the body of Christ. So we need this body of Christ. We need to become an active part of the body. A second confession. I'm full of confessions today. It's not even Lent. Whether I like to admit it or not, I always feel better after I exercise. Anybody else? Here's why I don't like to admit that. I don't really love to exercise. So I'm sitting on my couch. I would rather tell myself, oh my gosh, y'all, it's fine. I don't really need this. Is gonna, this rest, this is what I tell myself. See if you, this rest is good for me. I should definitely not exercise. <laughs> but the truth is, when I go out and I exercise, you know what? I feel so much better. I don't think I'm alone in that. And in the same way, when we are exercising our gifts and our graces for the benefit of God in ways that serve others in acts of mercy and justice, we feel better. We feel better when we're using those gifts, when we're exercising those gifts because we are connected to God and we become more connected to each other. So this is where the tension is. I know I feel better when I exercise, but it's kind of hard to get over the hump. Anybody else? There's this hump. And I can do it, right? And if I work really hard to get over the hump, then I'm, then I'm doing the exercise and I'm like, oh, this is easy, easy peasy. But getting over that hump is hard. So we've been living in this world where we've all pulled back. We've all been trying to figure out, like, what are we going to do in this world, and what can we do, and what can't we do? And we are having mental exhaustion. And so kind of the last thing we want to do is get over another hump. Get over another hump to do the next thing. But I truly believe that when we get over the hump of doing the thing where we're connected and serving and living out the body of Christ, again, in a powerful way, then we're going to feel better. We're going to be more in tune with each other and more connected to God. When we step back in some of our ways of being active in the body of Christ, we feel disconnected. And when we feel disconnected because we're not using our gifts and our talents, we are lethargic and lacking energy. 
Because I said when you find your gifts and your passions and you're working out of those places, you're getting energy. You're getting it, getting it, getting it. But when you stop, then you kind of have a lack of energy. You forget that God has gifted and graced you in powerful ways to make a difference in the world. And when we're making a difference in the world and we're living out of that passion, it feels really good. I want to be part of something that makes a difference in the world. That gives me energy. Am I alone in that? Do you want to be part of something that makes a difference in the world? I do, deeply, inherently in who I am. I want to be part of something that is working in the world to make a difference. Maybe it's not a huge difference. I don't think that there's going to be a history book where Mandy Jones is written in it. Not that kind of difference in the world, but the kind of difference in the world that says to the people of Concord, you matter, God loves you, there is a way to have abundant life. And because I know abundant life, because I love Jesus, I want to do something that changes your life, even if it's in the smallest way. Because when I am doing those things, when I'm living out my passion, when I am encouraged by the Holy Spirit to live in that way, it feels amazing. I am connected to God. I am connected to others. And that is what I think sometimes we really miss. One of the ways, one of the most basic ways we move beyond a place of disconnection is to make a commitment to be part of the body, to engage in communal Bible study, to pray for each other, to roll up our sleeves and dig into what the church is doing in the world, to be the body of Christ that meets the brokenness of the world in a way that says there is hope and there is love and there is grace and we are filled with abundant life and we are offering that in the world. That is the place where we get this energy and connection. Now I can stand here and give you a whole long list of things that you could do. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that next week so it's still coming. But this is where I want us to stop. I want us to stop and I really want you this week to think about how are you gifted and graced? How are you uniquely made? How is it that God has graced you to do things in the world and in the body? How is it that you are uniquely gifted and graced to be a part of this body? So not only do I want you to know where your gifts and graces are, then I want you to do the next hard piece. Are you really connected? Are you really connected to the body of Christ? Are you really living it out? It's one thing to desire to be part of something bigger, to desire this piece of change in the world, but it's a whole nother thing to take the step and be a part of it. It's just like that exercise. It's a whole nother thing to actually get off the couch and do the exercise than to just think about how good that would be. So this week, I want you to think about How are you connected? Is there a place where you can have a deeper commitment to what it means to be the body of Christ? Because we are so much better when we are together. It just is. It just is the way that God has created us to be communal people, to love one another and to work in the world so that the world comes to know the abundant love of God So I went yesterday um, to see Will, got to see Will, got to go to NC State, got to give him a big hug. It's been about six weeks, so it was a long, big mama hug. And when I was there, I was reminded of a quote um, from Rudigard Kipling that State uses, and this is the quote, for the strength of the pack is in the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is in the pack. When I first heard that at orientation, I absolutely loved it. And as I was walking through the student center and I was reminded of again, I thought, yes, this is so good. Because it is truly the same thing for the church. The strength of the church is in its members, and the strength of the members is in the church. 
We are stronger as individuals when we are working together, and our spiritual health depends on working in the body. So it is my prayer for you this week that you will take some time to reflect, to know that you are loved beyond measure, you are gifted and graced, you are incredible people who God has blessed with incredible talents. And I pray that you will see those places in your life. And I pray that you will take it one more step and ask God how you can fully be a part of the body of Christ. Because in that, there is so much goodness and love and grace and connectedness. And at this moment, I think that is something that we could all benefit from to truly be a part of the body of Christ. Let us pray. Holy and loving Lord, we give you thanks that we are gathered here in this space and we are so diverse. We give you thanks that we are not, um, we are not the same, that you have loved us beyond measure, that you have created us and knit us together in our mother's womb, that you have made us good with great skills and talents. Lord, I pray that each person will come to fully understand who they are in you how their gifts and graces edify the body. And Lord, we pray that we will step forward in our commitment to this place, to this body, to your kingdom, so that others may come to know the fullness of your mercy and grace that we are able to live out in the world as we work together. All these things we ask and pray in your strong and faithful name. Amen. Will you please stand?
the circle So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this moment and forever. Amen.